Make a snack. Add LED lights to any plush using Circuit Python. Featuring Shroomy, the magic mushroom. Hello friends, this is Professor Gallagher, and I am genuinely terrible at sewing. So of course, I decided to work on a project involving sewing as a holiday gift for my middle child. Said child loves cartoon mushrooms as well as kawaii or cute Japanese things. So I found this on-brand Mushroom Plus on Amazon and decided to perform some surgery on it. I added some LEDs, an on-off switch, and a button creating Shroomy, the magic mushroom. And here's how it works. Turn it on with a switch at the side of the stem. Press a button at the base of the stump, and you'll cycle through various LED animations. I'll show you how I tackle this project so you can modify your own plush, and I'll give you code that you can copy and paste to use in your own project, or that you can modify if you'd like to create an original light show. Now, if you poke around online, you might find some pre-built LED lights with some fixed animations that you could use, but the purpose of this video is to show you how you can create a plush project powered by CircuitPython. So let's learn big. Here are the parts I used. I use this plush. Now they come in different sizes, so I selected the medium size, and there are a lot of similar products. I wouldn't buy this brand again because mine came slightly discolored, like the red color on the cap bled into the white stem base. I didn't have enough time before Christmas to send it back and get a new one. My middle child didn't notice, so mission accomplished. Now the brain of this project can be any microcontroller that runs CircuitPython, and I suggest choosing one that has pass-through LiPo charging. I use the excellent and inexpensive Adafruit Feather RP2040 on this project. By selecting a board with pass-through charging, you can keep the LiPo battery plugged in and do all your charging through a USB cable. This is a good idea since the wires attached to most batteries are fragile and they can get broken off if they're repeatedly plugged in and unplugged. The board I'm using uses a USB-C cable, so Shroomy can be recharged by plugging a USB cable into the base of his brain, just like Neo from The Matrix. This will feel a little weird. Now that also means that you'll need a USB cable to match your board. Pay attention when buying your board. Some boards use a micro USB while others use USB-C and make sure that you have a data cable, not a charge only cable, since you'll need to initially send your program from your computer to your board. You can charge your battery by plugging your USB into your PC, or you should be able to use a standard cell phone wall jack too. Now you'll want a battery so that your plush can be carried around and doesn't need to be plugged in to light up. I chose a 1200 milliamp LiPo. If working with LiPo batteries, make sure that you know the safety issues. These can create a fire hazard if punctured, and that'd be quite dangerous. You shouldn't be terrified of this. Most makers use these kinds of batteries in their wearable projects, but I'm assuming that you've read up and know the risks. Don't give this to a child who chews batteries or who pokes their plush with sharp objects. As always, safety is up to you. I also use this JST expansion cable. It's plugged in between the board and the battery. It gives a nice click sound when pressed, and it allows the plush to be turned on and off without unplugging the battery. And this is a nice solution because it doesn't require you to solder in an extra switch. Now you'll also need a strand of individually addressable NeoPixel lights. These usually come in 20 lights per strand. That was perfect for my project. You can choose either two inch or four inch pitch, which means the space between the lights. Measure what would work best with your plush before ordering. My project uses four inch pitch. I also used a button that I programmed to change between the different lighting animations. A 30 millimeter arcade style button should work fine. And you'll also need a needle, scissors, and thread to match your plush. For me, that meant maroon thread to match the mushroom cap and white thread to match the stem. Now this project does require a bit of soldering, so you'll need a soldering iron and some solder. You'll also need some hookup wire. I used stranded wire, about 22 gauge, which I found was sturdy enough, but also had enough bend in it to work nicely inside of a plush. And you'll probably want either heat shrink or electrical tape. Now here's a diagram of the wiring I'm using in this build. The LED strand was wired with power going to BAT, since we're using the battery. I'm using D6 for the signal pin, and ground goes to GND. And for the two wire button, I used a D11 for the signal pin, and ground of course goes to GND. Now when using NeoPixel LEDs, make sure that you're adding a signal into the proper end of your strand. Data only flows in one direction in these strands. Now Adafruit's documentation says that you should be able to see the markings for the direction of the data flow. Maybe it's my terrible so bad that I can't drive eyesight, but I can never see these markings, so I always test the wires before soldering to make sure that the connections are working. Now for the 4 inch strand, I found that the input end should be the one with these pins in them. When checking, if you're using the wrong end of the NeoPixel strand, your light simply won't light up. Now you can cut these wires at the input end and separate the three wires out, power signal and ground, strip them and solder the wires into the pinholes 
controls of your board, but in this video you'll also see that I'm using an opposite JST connector that matches the input end of my NeoPixel strand. You don't need to use these connections, but I bought a bunch of these a while ago on Amazon and they happen to give me a good amount of extension without having to solder three separate extension wires to my strand. And a tip for educators, these connectors are really useful when using strands in classroom projects because they let you connect and disconnect boards without having to stress the wires on the ends or worry about soldering. In my course, we actually strip the ends of the connection wires and use a bolt-on kit to attach the connectors to the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, and this lets us use NeoPixel strands without any soldering at all. Hat tip to Geekmon projects where I learned this trick. Now, if you're new to CircuitPython or just want to copy and paste code, here's a simple test script that should light up all 20 LEDs in your strand connected to pin D6 and leave them white as long as the program is up and running. I also have this code in a GitHub repo that you can copy and paste into Moo. It's at github.com slash Gallagher with a U slash LED underscore plush, all lowercase letters. Find the code named all white for test and sewing dot pi and copy and paste that code into Moo. Just make sure that you save it as code dot Pi onto your board. If this is your first CircuitPython video, you need to download and install Moo, which is free software used for editing CircuitPython programs. Complete newbie should probably check out the first couple of videos in my CircuitPython School playlist, which cover setting up a board for CircuitPython and installing Moo. By the way, I use the Adafruit LED animations library in this code, and if you want to understand the code better for making your own animations, you can check out CircuitPython School Lesson 8. It's a lesson that I use every semester when teaching physical computing. Now, a quick note on wiring up the button. Now, this is a slightly different button than the one that you'll see in the video but any large button should do and these buttons typically come with two terminals where you solder your wires to and the buttons don't have any polarity so it doesn't matter which terminal you use for your signal wire and which one you use for ground now the button I use in this actual build has the terminals coming out of the side I would actually recommend that you use one like this where the terminals come out of the back instead and I used heat shrink to cover the connections after soldering if you don't have heat shrink you can use electrical tape just make sure all the metal on the terminals and wires are covered and as you can see here, I threaded the ground for both my button and my LED lights through the same GND pinhole, and then I soldered them together inside that hole. Now when you want to test your button wiring, you can download the final code that I used in this project that cycles through all the animations with each button press at the same GitHub repo. The final code used in this project is called button underscore press underscore animations dot pi. So again, just copy and paste this into Moo. Just make sure that when you save it to your CircuitPy volume that you name it as code.py. Now when adding electronics to your plush, just find a seam where the two parts of the fabric are sewn together that's close to the area where you want to sew in your lights and cut away a bit of the stitching but not the fabric from this seam. For me that was this spot where the maroon cap meets the white stem, then I removed all the filler from the cap and saved it to add back in later. And I previously measured out a pattern that I thought would look good that was about 1.5 inches from the spot design on the mushroom to the light in a roughly spiral pattern. Now when I sewed my lights in, I'd start by positioning the LED so that it glows through the fabric, then I'd thread the sewing knot inside the fabric, and I would loop around the wire several times, close to where the wire meets the LED, then on the inside of the plush I'd cross over diagonally and then I'd loop around several more times on the opposite side, and I'd make four or five loops on each side before crossing diagonally, and I'd do about six or more diagonal crosses. This would hold the LEDs in nice and tight, and a furry plush should do a pretty good job of hiding the thread loops that you make to attach the LED lights. Now as mentioned, I'm not very good at sewing, but I found some good YouTube tutorials to fumble my way through with an acceptable result. And you can see that the lights shine through pretty nicely even though all the electronics are sewn inside the plush fabric. Next, I stuffed my soldered and wired up button inside the plush, gently pushing it down so that the button was in the stump. You can temporarily remove any filler that you need to, then stuff it back in after your button is positioned. Just make sure that you don't tug out any of the wires when you're putting your button in. Now for the JST on off switch. This is used to turn the build on and off when it's only running from battery power, it's not plugged in. And I slide my on off switch into the back of the stem so that it can be easily reached. And I keep the two ends of the wire out the top. Then I connect one end of the wire to the LiPo battery and the other end of the power switch cord to the battery connector on the board. And after that, all the wiring should be done and you should be ready to stow the electronics in your plush, add the plush filler back in, and then sew your board in. Now there's probably a more elegant way to design a 3D printed enclosure for the board, but I decided to simply sew the two mounting holes that are on either side of the board near the USB connector onto my plush. So I looped thread through the mounting holes in the board, not the pinholes, using my white thread. Then I filled in any extra plush stuffing, taking care not to jostle out the wires and the electronics, and I sewed closed any of the remaining gap that existed in the plush, and when I was done, I had this nice Neo from the Matrix style USB connection discreetly hidden in the perfect spot in this mushroom. 
so that's one way to easily add LEDs to a plush using CircuitPython. I hope this brings either you or the gift recipient much joy. And if you share online a photo or video of anything that you've built, you might be selected for one of the Make Something Awesome laptop stickers. Remember, there's lots more great maker and app development content on my YouTube channel, including all of the videos that I use in the university courses that I teach on physical computing and iOS development. Keep coding and keep making awesome things.